60,000 San Diegans are dealing with Alzheimer's. It's a disease that impacts nearly 6 million people across the country. Yeah, but new research from Yale University could be a breakthrough in treating it, and it involves a cocktail. Joining us around the table to talk about this, Dr. Sabrina Fabi, walk us through this research. I know, so this is really exciting because Alzheimer's is actually the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, the third leading cause after heart disease and cancer in the elderly, and two-thirds of women are the ones who are affected. So it's a real big problem, and the CDC mm -hmm. predicts that it's going to double in what it affects in the United States by 2060. So it's something that researchers are constantly trying to strive to figure out how can we stop it. And so to understand how this cocktail works, we have to understand what is really going on with Alzheimer's. And so this toxic protein called amyloid is found to kind of pile up in the brain uh, as a function of Alzheimer's. And usually is one of the early stages of the disease, which can happen as early as 10 years before you even have symptoms, this protein is piling up. And so what these researchers were trying to determine is how can we prevent that protein from damaging neurons or brain cells. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's really what this new cocktail does. Okay, so is it like really a, something you drink? I feel kind of silly asking that, but what do you mean it's like a cocktail that you... I know, they call it a designer cocktail, right, and it's really a fancy term for a, some, a medicine that you ingest, that okay. you drink. Um, but it really comes from an old antibiotic that they were able to break down into polymers, so pieces of this antibiotic that they were able to give to mice that, that they had made into having or mimic Alzheimer's mm -hmm. condition. And so when they ingested this, the mice started actually demonstrating a reversal in their memory loss. Mm. Wow. Um, and so the thought is that it does get into the brain, it crosses over because it is broken down so much, so that it is able to prevent that amyloid or that toxic protein from piling up and damaging our neurons or brain cells. So, Go ahead. I would say Alzheimer's just affects so many people. Why, why has it been so hard to figure out how to treat it? Right, it's because the, the disease starts so much earlier than when and the symptoms actually start to manifest. So that toxic protein is piling up for about a decade mm. before you can even diagnose and it. And now they're trying to reverse it? And so they're trying to, and now we even have technology to detect when that protein is piling up. So it, CT scans and even some radiographs can actually see that protein piling up in the brain, even if you're not demonstrating the signs mm -hmm. of memory loss or cognitive impairment or making just daily decisions or even personality changes, which is as you move along with Alzheimer's, those things start to happen. So if you can detect it, then you can start administering this cocktail. So do you think, let's just look into the future a little bit. Do you think that maybe those CT scans would be kind of part of like a normal, I'm going to get my checkup, I'm 45 or I'm 50, and it automatically, they automatically scan your brain and then they go, okay, you've, you've demonstrated this amount of plaque we're going to go ahead and try to treat you with something to prevent it or stop it. That is the ide that, that's the ideal world. Um, but the reality is, is that sometimes what insurance companies decide to cover is based on, is this screening tool actually preventing enough mm -hmm. lives from you know, dying or from enough you know, burden on society to warrant intervening? That's the reason why maybe mammograms aren't done in our 20s or early 30s, because there's too many false positives. You're going to detect too many other things and that increases healthcare costs overall. Mm -hmm. So there's always a fine line with when you start incorporating uh, these screening tests, but I would predict that we may have even more sophisticated tools to diagnose this as this progresses mm -hmm. probably kind of sad in five that years. The insurance companies have such a huge, I mean I get it, I understand, but it is kind of a bummer too that that cost is so much a part of the conversation oftentimes with trying to stop and prevent things that are happening in our body. You're absolutely right. The, the, the good thing is that there are now different institutes where they will scan you completely um, regardless. And of mm -hmm. course, it's cash pay only. Even, even here in San Diego, they do mm -hmm. a full body scan. And then they invite you back maybe even five or 10 years to see if there are any changes. But of course, those things are not covered by insurance. Right. Really great to have you around the table. Interesting research, uh, as always, that you bring to us. Thanks. Thanks for having Thank me. You.